Okay, welcome back student. Now I would like to demonstrate to you how we can play around with the uh, amplitude histogram, uh, amplitude zonation in our real seismic data. So if you have your data loaded and everything ready, so just right click on your seismic data. So I'm just using my example that I have in my PC. So you just right click and go to setting. You will go to the opacity. And then you can see this graph. So this graph is actually the same graph that we see in our lecture notes. So the y-axis is showing from 0% to 100%, showing the numbers of n samples. I mean, how many percentage of samples in each zone. And the x-axis is showing the values of amplitude. Thus, we have here um, values of 12, 12.79 to negative of 11.91 of amplitude values. In these examples, we are showing uh, blue as the negative amplitudes while our yellowish red as the positive amplitude. Your zone 1 will be in this part. This is your zone 1 positive, your zone 1 negative. Your zone 2 will be this part and this part while your Middle part will be your zone 3. As you can see, zone 3 has the highest numbers of samples, even it's almost up to 98.4%. And it has values of amplitude 0 0.02, as you can see when I'm pointing here. So there are 98.4% of samples in our, our traces in our seismic data having values of amplitude 0 0.02 which is means mainly we couldn't see anything the highest number so let's see when we do something on the this uh, zonation what we can see on our seismic data so this is what i will do i try to play around with this i do quite a big of changes in here and then let's try again there's nothing changed since uh, we couldn't see any changes in this one because there's no value means it's very minimal of amplitude we can also try to do it again like this See, when I'm discarding the zone 1, I'm, I'm discarding zone 3. Um, hold on. Okay, students, let's continue. Sorry about the phone calls just now. So, I will do it again right now. So, please pay your attention on how did I draw the histogram as well as the changes that you see on the seismic data. So, right now, I would like to discard the values of in zone 1 negative, zone 2 negative, and zone 3 negative. So at the moment, what we have seen here is basically a little bit of zone 1 negative, just a few, and mainly none of the zone 2 and zone 3 in the negative side, but we can still see the zone 1, 2, and 3 in the positive side. So this is what the data shows if we have only the samples in this zone. So, if we would just would like to see the zone 1 in the positive side. So, what we can do is we discard everything. That's what you see. That is what showing you the highest numbers of zone 1 and a little bit of zone 2. We can also see this. Okay, let's say I just click apply. We can also see this on the time slice, which can look uh, slightly better, I think. Let's try. Couldn't see much because everything quite dark. Let's try on the inline. Mm. 
my PC is slightly delaying. See so on the inline, we can have something here. So this showing some very high amplitudes. We can actually also try to um, check it again. Where is the... You can always go back to your graph and see. So this is how we play around. So we can change the opacity from value from zero means transparent to one means let me check if it's zero means transparent and one means opaque. So now let's have a look on how we can apply amplitude attributes. Amplitude attribute can be applied based on a single surface or when you pick your horizon. So this is example of horizon-based extraction. And we can also use Windows-based, which is we have, uh, we would like to extract the values between two horizons. So we pick two horizons at the top and at the bottom. And then we can ask the software to calculate the values of amplitudes in between these two horizons. Apart from that, we can also use like... Um, slices time slices or depth slices so that we can pick a time zone from this um, 450 to 580 so that we can see what is the values in between these two times this is examples of horizon slice or horizons uh, from one surface where we pick these horizons so they are picking on the red horizons in these examples is a very old data but still helpful and this is examples from your textbook uh, Alistair R. Brown. This is on the inline or cross line view and you can see on a map view you can see the color changes. This is showing these are the faulted blocks. So you have these faulted blocks going down, going down, going down. So you can see this is the highest part. This is the lowest part or the deepest part which is this zone. Apart from that, we can also use uh, horizon slices to evidence uh, mandarin channels. This is examples of different uh, amplitudes in a different um, mandarin channels. This is actually a production gas inside the channel. So this the, the A, B, C, the, the alphabets are showing a production zones. And this is actually a stratigraphic and structurally impact as the channels are actually flowing based on a faulted block which is this faulted blocks application of amplitude attribute based on window amplitude attributes where you have two times or a two track horizon this is an alternative way to extract the amplitude along a horizon over a time window or uh, an interval the window can be constantly flat which is this time or it can also make it in between intervals which is your track horizon this is uh, giving you informations on what is what do you have in between these two so you can predict more you can interpret more examples of window amplitude as examples you have a dhi direct hydrocarbon indicator in this zone so you pick two horizons and you compare in between two different amplitudes which is average absolute amplitude and uh, root mean square amplitude. They look the same because they are basically works based on how the peak of your wiggles, peak of your samples. But basically we can see that slight changes in this zone and in this zone. Apart from this, the yellow color in this uh, average absolute amplitude comparing to the RMF's amplitude is slightly different. So the changes is very little but it might be useful in predicting the size of your reservoir or the size of your potential hydrocarbon. Amplitude of the individual samples are added up within this range so that it will give a sign of gross amplitude for the whole interval. This is another example of uh, time amplitude in a uh, time windows in amplitude interval based on time so it works based on time 2050 millisecond to 2150 milliseconds where it has this 
uh, DHI uh, red points here and this is actually showing a channel on top view and these channels is actually showing that um, mainly the channels are not affected by the changes in the colors because it's this red amplitude or red samples the samples that stand out is very obvious that it is stand out comparing to the rest so it's still dominant so it still work best to work this channel so actually different data set may have different uh, ways to interpret sometimes you can use just a single surface or sometimes you can use a window um, surface a uh, window interpretation types such as these examples another examples for window amplitude attribute is uh, we have zone one time two and time three so in time three we have several points of direct hydrocarbon indicator but they are very chaotic in general so we use our horizon one the light green color and another horizons at the bottom so we mark we try to map the amplitude zones in between these two horizons what we can see is we have several uh, dhi spotted they are along these faults so you can see actually faulted dots they are faulted in north south region and you can see the uh, red colors these red colors are dhi which is represented by this small uh, reddish bluish color here but they are not economical because they are very small in size this is one already one kilometer so this is maybe just like 200 meters in white so it's not economical and you can actually say that zone 3 here showing that it is not uh, suitable for production based on your amplitude extraction so this is uh, examples of uh, for today we have learned about horizon amplitude extraction and amplitude extraction based on windows technique which is either by two horizons or based on time um, we use uh, horizon amplitude for reservoir study it's usually no contamination because you pick your horizons it is highly dependent on how your picking is correct your tracking accuracy importance to pick the horizon first and you need you need to have the horizon uh, name first but for window amplitude it's a good idea to study the whole uh, seismic data in a quick view it's usually for reconnaissance it is always subject to contamination by other amplitude because you are taking some range of uh, data set to study the amplitude but if it is sometimes you can straight away pick you can straight away do this uh, analysis of window amplitude without any horizons because sometimes you just need a time to uh, two different time levels uh, you don't have to pick your horizons as I mentioned but if even if you are picking it it doesn't have to be necessarily correct or necessarily connected to each other so sometimes you record requires of window definition and type of amplitude to be extracted it's just that you just need you don't really need to pick your horizons very uh, precisely for window amplitude so in conclusion for amplitude attributes uh, exercise that you're going to do in the class later on you have to bear in mind that amplitude is the most common and main attribute to be extracted from seismic you can has lots of types for uh, amplitude attributes and yeah, you can see in your Petra later on it is the most earliest used attribute it can be applied through horizon amplitude or windowed amplitude either by two horizons or two times uh, the color and amplitude sometimes related to each other it is divided by three zones zone one to three with different range of amplitude and it is represented by the zone uh, amplitude graph we usually call amplitude anomalies to describe any sudden changes in the amplitude variation within our seismic data and this sometimes shows a direct hydrocarbon indicator. So with that, I hope you can try and apply this amplitude zonation system and play around with the opacity and transparency during the lab session. Uh, have fun playing with, playing with your software.